Today I want to teach you about Satan's tactics, the tactics of his demons, and how to cancel the assignment of Satan over your life. You see, um, Christians need to understand the demonic realm because ignorance is not bliss. We need to understand how the enemy operates so that we can come against the tactics of the enemy. In Hosea 4.3 it says this, um, My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. We need to understand that many of the battles that we face here on this earth is because Satan hates you and it's his purpose to kill, steal, and destroy you. In John 10, 9 to 11, Yeshua said this, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. When you look in the Gospels, um, a good portion of Yeshua's ministry was casting out unclean spirits and demonic spirits. In Matthew 9, 32 to 33, Yeshua casts out a mute spirit and the man's able to speak. Uh, Luke 13, verses 11 to 12, he cast out a spirit of infirmity from a woman who was bent over for 18 years, and when the spirit left, she was able to straighten up and walk. Uh, Luke, uh, or excuse me, Mark 1, 23 to 26, he cast out um, an unclean spirit in the synagogue. Luke 8, 26 to 33, he cast out many demons from the man of Gadarenes. As a matter of fact, the demons identified themselves as legion. In Mark 9, 14 to 25, he commands a deaf and dumb spirit to come out of a little boy who was having um, seizures. And this demonic spirit would throw the little boy into the fire and into the water to try to kill him. And when Jesus cast out the spirit, um, he lo no longer had convulsions and he was able then to see and to speak, excuse me, to hear and to speak. Matthew 10, 11, uh, Yeshua gives power to his disciples to cast out unclean spirits. You see, the church today somehow believes or thinks that these demonic spirits were only for the time of, of Yeshua and that somehow these spirits have disappeared or that they no longer exist. And that is not the truth. The truth is that these demonic spirits still exist today because they are what the one third of the angels that, um, that rebelled against God and um, they sided with Lucifer and then these demonic spirits or these angels were actually cast to the earth which then becomes the demonic spirits. So I'm going to show you in scripture that these demonic spirits or unclean spirits were once in heaven as angels. So turn with me to Mark chapter 3 verses 11 and 12 and it says this, And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, you are the son of God. But he sternly warned them that they should not make him known. So how did these unclean spirits identify and know who Yeshua was? Well, the answer is, is because these unclean spirits were once angels and they were with Jesus. They were with Yeshua in heaven. And so when, when Yeshua came to this earth, they could identify him. So according to the scriptures that um, the scripture references that I just gave you, we see that demonic spirits um, cause sickness and disease. They can cause deafness, um, muteness, blindness, and even insanity. You see, the medical world wants to give all of these um, diseases and sicknesses a name. And then what the medical world wants to do is they want to treat these, um, these demonic spirits with pharmaceutical drugs. And all the pharmaceutical drugs do is mask the symptoms, but the demonic spirit and the root cause of the disease is still there. So we see in Ephesians 6 that there is um, a hierarchy of the demonic realm. So in Ephesians 6 verses 11 and 12, it says this, put on the full armor of God that you may, ab may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So I want to read to you what Holy Spirit 
<clears throat> revealed to me about the, the demonic hierarchy. These are his words. He said, child, the de demonic spirits have assignments. There is a hierarchy in the demonic realm and they have positions of power. Just like the armies of this world, they have positions like generals, colonels, captive, captains, and infantry. There are demonic powers over regions and nations, and these would be like the generals and presidents of nations. They report directly to Satan. The lesser demons are like the infantry. They are the ones that receive their assignment from a higher demon, and they carry out their assignment against humanity. These are unclean spirits that enter a person and reside there until, until they are cast out or they complete their assignment. Their goal is to kill a person before they get saved and are born again. When they complete a mission and that person dies and goes to hell, then they are promoted and given a new assignment. If an unclean spirit fails and the person gets saved and the demons are cast out, the demon is punished. He said, then they are sent back out to inhabit another person. So I want to take a look at the assignments um, that Satan has and the assignments that he gives to his demons. Number one, the number one assignment of a demon is to keep a person unsaved um, and to keep them from repenting of their sins and receiving Jesus as Lord, as Lord and Savior. Because if a demon can keep a person um, unsaved their entire life and then they die, guess what? They, they enter into hell where they will be um, tortured for all eternity. And, and how, do, how do they accomplish this? They do this through drugs, through alcohol, through uh, suicide, uh, through homosexual spirits, um, through adultery, fornication, gangs, murder, corrupt government, um, um, abortion. Um, you see, uh, Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy, and he will do whatever it takes to get you dead. Um, Satan also assigns demons to uh, God's children, and their assignments are to destroy finances, destroy marriages, uh, destroy families, and to rob you of your health. You see, when you became born again, Satan lost your soul uh, to his kingdom, but he still wants to cause you to suffer while you are on this earth. Satan also uses his demons to pit Christians against Christians. And we see this um, by the division in the churches. You see, denominations are Satan's toll to pit Christians against Christians so that we can fight against one um, amongst each other saying, well, I don't believe in that doctrine because, you know, I belong to this particular don denomination. And he does that to keep us from being unified under Christ. Satan also uses the Jezebel spirit in churches, and we're seeing this more and more. And what happens is the Jezebel spirit will enter into the church leader, generally the pastor or the person that's heading the ministry, and when the Jezebel spirit enters, usually through the spirit of pride, because the pastor was full of pride, because the Lord had been using them in a mighty and powerful way. And when this spirit enters, it is manifested in this way. First of all, um, the pastor wants to control everything about the church. He wants to control and micromanage everybody's ministry. Um, he wants uh, to do it his way or no way. And when you don't do it his way, he gets uh, very angry at the people and he uses control um, and manipulation to try to control people. And then when uh, the Jezebel spirit is operating also in this church, he has what I call puppets. And these puppets are people that will bow down to every single move that he makes and they will fulfill everything that he wants them to do. And when a particular person or a ministry will not um, kowtow to his plans, then what he begins to do is he begins to, uh, to start disparaging them, um, cutting them down. And a lot of times this happens right in the pulpit. And he does it in such a way that he doesn't name the person or the ministry. But what he does is he uh, starts alluding to um, that particular person. And he does it right from the minister from the, excuse me, right from the pulpit. 
And another thing, another sign of a Jezebel spirit in a church is when a pastor or church leader will tell you, well, don't go, don't go to that church. Don't go to this ministry. Um, and because what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep you in their church and they don't want you to grow spiritually because they become jealous when uh, they see the spirit of the Lord operating more powerful in you than what is happening in them. So we need to be aware of this Jezebel spirit and we need to be praying for our pastors and church leaders who are exhibiting um, this particular demonic spirit. So I want to uh, also start and um, begin to talk to you about how these demonic spirits enter people. First of all, they enter through sinful acts, okay? And then they enter through um, your five senses, which is your eyes, your ears, your, your mouth, your nose, and your touch. So let's start with the eyes, okay? So what are you allowing to enter into your eye gates? What movies are you watching? Um, what videos are you viewing? What video games you know, are you playing? What magazines are you watching? Are, are, excuse me, are you viewing? Um, are you viewing pornography? Because when you view pornography, a sexual spirit will enter in through your eye gate. And once this sexual spirit enters into your eye gate, let me tell you, this sexual spirit will never be satisfied. It will always be crying out for more pornography, more sex, um, and it will never be satisfied. And that is why um, uh, people that view pornography end up moving um, from, from pornography to rape, and then um, it also moves into murder. I know they interviewed this one uh, man who was in jail who was a serial rapist and um, he actually uh, turned to murder and he said that um, it all began with him viewing pornography and then it progressed from there. So we need to understand that we need to guard our eye gates. I also want to share a story with you about uh, three young children that I ministered to and how these demonic spirits entered them through their eye gates. So I get a call from a grandmother and she said, Patricia, I, I need your help. Um, my granddaughter um, is exhibiting signs of um, demonic um, activity. She's only five years old. She tries to hurt herself. She tries to gouge herself. She runs to the kitchen and grabs the knives and tries to stab herself. And her mother is at her wits end. She doesn't know what to do with her five-year-old and she's ready to commit her to an institution. And I said, please, please, don't do that because all they will do at this institution is they will drug this little girl up and she will never get set free. So they brought the three children to me and I began to minister to them. And as I interviewed the three children, this is the story that unfolded and you need to understand this. So they were ages eight, seven, and five. They were children of a divorced family. And when they went to daddy's house, daddy allowed them to watch zombie movies and these, these scary horror movies. And so one night um, after watching these horror movies, um, a demonic spirit appeared to the eight-year-old. And, and the eight-year-old described him that he was dressed all in black. He had a cape and he had a large sword and he was afraid. And the demonic spirit said to him, I'll put my sword away because I don't want to hurt you, but I need your help. I have these three children that I'm trying uh, to search for and I need your help in finding them. And so the eight-year-old wanted to help him. So he agreed to help this spirit um, find his children. And when that eight-year-old agreed to that, these three demonic spirits entered these three children and they began to manifest in these children's lives. And so as I began to minister, them, minister to them, we were able to cast out all those demonic spirits. These three children then received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they were gloriously set free. Now my point in sharing that, that story with you is that the, these demonic spirits had the entrance to enter into these children because they were watching these horror movies. Okay, so horror movies are not for children, nor are they for adults because demonic spirits can enter in through your eye gates. Number two, demonic spirits can enter in through your ears. So what kind of music are you listening to? Are you listening to rap? Are you listening to grunge music? Are you listening to lyrics that are talking about killing and destroying and raping? Um, do you really want to listen to artists and singers that have sold their soul to the devil? 
I would think not. Um, you have to understand as born again Christians that we need to be watching what we are putting into our ears. Um, the very first message that I received as a born again Christian, literally I was only two hours old in the Lord and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, he said, get rid of all of your secular music, throw away all of your tapes. I only want you to listen to Christian music. See, even as a baby Christian, Holy Spirit was instructing me because he knew that spirits can enter in through the ear gates. Um, spirits can also enter in through your mouth. So what unholy things are you putting in your mouth? Are you smoking cigarettes? Are you uh, 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 smoking marijuana? Are you drinking alcohol? You see, spirits of addiction can enter in through the mouth. Um, number four, the spirit of touch. Demonic spirits can be transferred through touch. Sexually transmitted diseases have a demonic spirit attached to them, and it, they are transferred through illicit sex. HIV, AIDS, HPV, herpes, gonorrhea, syphilis, PID, chlamydia, hepatitis B, and gen genital warts. Listen to me, they all have demonic spirits attached to them. That's why God uh, in his word um, said that he, when a husband and wife join in marriage, that they are to remain faithful to each other um, to, to prevent these uh, demonic spirits from entering through illicit sex. Um, these demonic spirits can also enter through the nose. Um, huffing aerosol cans, um, snorting cocaine are ways that these demonic spirits can enter in through the nose. Um, you can purposely also um, breathe in a demonic spirit. And I want to tell you this story, and this is a true story, where there was um, uh, two homosexual men. Um, one of um, them was uh, in the hospital dying from AIDS. And um, his lover was there at his bedside while he was dying. And a woman witnessed him um, as he bent down and he literally breathed in the homosexual spirit and the other demonic spirits um, in his lover. And she said, I could actually see it as this wispy black cloud um, leaving the, the guy on his deathbed and entering into the homosexual lover. So we see that homo uh, homosexual spirits and any demonic spirits can enter in through the nose. So I hear many question, uh, I hear many Christians um, say this, and they say, "Well, um, you know, once you're born again and you are saved, there's no way a demonic spirit can enter you. They can oppress you, but they can't enter you." And I'm here to tell you that demonic spirits can absolutely enter into a born again. Christian. And I want to share my story with you. And I share this with you for the sole reason so that you can understand that when you've been taught that demonic spirits cannot enter into a born again Christian, that is a lie from the pit of hell. So this is my my story. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a difficult story for me to tell. Um, but nonetheless, I need to share it with you so that you understand that what I'm saying is true. So I had been married about 20 years to my first husband, and he committed adultery. And when he committed adultery, he um, contracted HPV from uh, the woman that he was committing adultery um, with. And, um, and in turn, he gave me the HPV, which then progressed into cervical cancer. Um, if, if you know anything about HPV, it is the number one cause of cervical cancer in women. But let me back the story up, but because before I was diagnosed with the HPV, before I was diagnosed with the cancer, Holy Spirit um, spoke these words to me while I was worshiping and praising him. He said, child, the enemy is going to try to kill your body with cancer. But he said, do not fear, I will deliver you. Now he didn't say, I will heal you. He said, I will deliver you. So when I went to the doctor and I had been diagnosed with both the HPV and the cervical cancer, 
Um, at first I thought, wow, this is the knockout punch of the enemy. It's, it, it, you know, I, he's going to take me out. But I remembered the words that Holy Spirit had given to me literally months before. And I thought, no, the Lord said he's going to deliver me. So the Lord instructed me to go to a healing service. Um, it was a high profile, um, uh, named a ministry that was having a healing service and um, he instructed me to go and when I went we were there about three or four hours early and we decided that we were going to go into the outer courts of the the the, the, um, the arena and just pray for people so I was laying hands on people when they were um, being slain in the spirit and these two women from New York um, had traveled to this uh, healing service and they laid hands on me and when they laid hands on me, I went out in the spirit and um, I was laying there and they continued to lay hands on me and pray in the spirit. And when they did, I could feel this demonic spirit literally leave my body. And I knew at that moment I had been delivered from the cancer. So I'm back to the doctor um, a few weeks later because at that point they were doing biopsies um, of the cancer. And um, I said, doctor, you can go ahead and do the biopsy, but I'm telling you that Jesus Christ healed me of the cancer. And um, so a couple of weeks later, the um, results of the biopsy came back and he took me into his office. He sat me down and he said, Patricia, you're not going to believe this. He said, not only do you no longer have cancer, he says, but you no longer have HPV. You see, what the enemy meant to destroy me, Yeshua turned around for his glory and his honor. And so I'm here to tell you that, that the, both of those demonic spirit entered through sex, okay? And it was transferred through illicit sex. And so those of you who are out there that are in relationships that you should not be in, I'm here to tell you, you need to stop. You need to repent of that because you are opening yourself up for demonic spirits to enter. You are open, opening your up, yourself up for these sexually transmitted diseases that have demonic spirits attached to them. So having said that, I absolutely positively know that a demonic spirit can enter into a born again Christian and it manifests in our body as a sickness or a disease. So, I know I've shared some really difficult material with you, but next I want to teach you how to break the power of the assignments of the enemy over you and over your life. So, um, first, as, um, as I taught you already, you need to understand and realize that demons, first of all, they really exist. And second of all, these demons and these unclean spirits, they hate being in hell. They want to inhabit a body on earth because they absolutely hate being in hell. So if you'll turn with me to Luke chapter 8, verses 26 to 33, you'll understand what I, what I just said. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite of Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it often seized him, and he was... Um, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demons into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding on there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would not permit them to enter. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep into the lake and drowned. So there's there's some things that we learn from the scripture. Number one, demons hate being in hell because they literally begged Yeshua not to cast them back into the abyss. They don't want to be in the, the abyss. They want to inhabit uh, people or a living um, 
body, whether it be a people or an animal. Um, demons need a host body to carry out their assignments. Even the pigs were aware when the demons entered them and the demons actually caused that these pigs to run violently down this hill and into the water so that they were drowned because you see once the pigs were drowned they were dead and then the demons then could actually leave the the body of the dead pigs and they could find somebody else to inhabit. So when we are casting out demons, we need to make sure that when we cast them out, that we cast them into the abyss or the pit, and we need to tell them to stay there, okay? Um, so that they're not seeking um, another body to inhabit. We've been given authority to use the name of Yeshua to cast out these demons. So if you'll turn with me to Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 20, and it says this. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are sub subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. You see, you need to use the authority of Jesus Christ's name, Yeshua's name, to cancel Satan's assignments over you and over your life. So number one, you need to confess your sin and repent of the sin so that you close the door for these demonic spirits. Number two, you need to use scripture. You see, uh, the Holy Spirit gave me these particular scriptures to use to cancel the assignment of the, of the demons and Satan over our life. And this is what he said. He said, child, use Isaiah 54, 17 and Luke 10, 19 to cancel the assignments of the enemy in your life. He said, remember that my word is power. I am the word. So Luke, or excuse me, Isaiah 54, 17 says this, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. And again, Luke 10, 19, which I, I read part of it above. Um, Behold, I give you authority to trample on the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, we need to use the scriptures and we need to use the word of God to, com to combat um, the plans and schemes of the enemy um, over our lives. There's a man by the name of, of Kevin um, Basconi. And he sees angels on a regular basis. And he said that we can activate our angels by decreeing the word of God over our life. And he said, these angels will co-labor with us against the enemy. So when we decree Isaiah 54, 17, Luke 10, 19, and Psalm 91 over our lives, and remember, you need to, you need to decree these out loud so that the angels can hear them and that they can, and that, and that they can um, <clears throat> begin to respond to the word of God. And also the enemy, or excuse me, the demons need to hear the word of God. So we can activate our angels um, to do battle for us in the spiritual realm when we use the word of God. You see, we are fighting a spiritual battle. Second Corinthians 10 verses three to four says this, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So this is not, this is a spiritual battle. This is not a battle of the flesh. Another declaration that you can de decree out loud is something like this. You can say, in the name of Yeshua, I cancel the assignment of Satan over my life. 
I break all the word curses. I, bre I break any witchcraft. Um, I cancel any spells that have been placed over me. I break any generational curse that has been passed down to me and my family. And I command any demonic spirit that will not bow down to Yeshua. I command you um, to go into the pit and to stay there and remain there. These are words that we can use. We have the authority of Yeshua's name to command these demonic spirits to leave us and to leave our families. Number three, you need to get baptized with the Holy Spirit so that your house is not empty. Let me explain, because I'm gonna read, it, read you a scripture. Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 to 45 says this, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. None. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So let me tell you, when, when these demonic spirits, when you cast them out, um, you know, they will leave. But if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit and you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, guess what? It says in scripture that they're going to come back and bring seven spirits worse than that. Um, and, and your condition will be, be even worse than that. So it's very important that you get baptized in the Holy Spirit for your spiritual protection. And if you don't speak in tongues, please go to my other video where, um, where I teach you on how to receive your prayer language and, how, and, and you will receive the baptism of his Holy Spirit. Uh, number four, we need to soak in the word of God to protect, protect us from the schemes of uh, Satan. I want to read to you um, Yeshua's words. He said this, there is a host of demons that have been released on this earth to deceive my people. My children must be wise and stay close to me. These demons will inhabit people and perform many signs and wonders. He said, it's easy to see these demons in a person when there is wickedness abounding in their lives. But when these demons begin to manifest signs, wonders, and miracles, that is when my children will need great discernment and a knowledge of my word. Those who deny that I, Yeshua, came in the flesh and deny that I died on the cross for the sins of the people and deny that I rose from the dead and deny that I returned to my heavenly father, these are false teachers. Know the word. Do not be deceived by false teachers, false prophets, false healers, and false workers of miracles. He said, I am the word. Know me, says Yeshua, and you will not be deceived in these last days. So what's important to know also is that Yeshua provided complete redemption for us, for our body, our soul, and our spirit. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2 says this, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So you see in this scripture, when Yeshua said that the Spirit of the Lord God was upon him, that same Spirit of the Lord God is upon us to preach good tidings to the, to the poor. That's the gospel of salvation. That's how people get born again when we preach the gospel of salvation. He has sent uh, Yeshua and he has sent us to heal the brokenhearted. That means healing the wounded souls. He has sent us to proclaim liberty to the captives. That means to get people set free from sins and generational curses. He has sent us uh, to open the prison to those who are bound. That means to destroy the works of Satan that keep people in prison and in bondage. 
the bondage of sickness and disease. That's a work of the enemy. He has sent us. He has called us to do this. And so we need to take our rightful place and use the authority that we have been given through Yeshua's name. And we need to get people set free. We need to be his instruments of love and peace in a lost world. You see, when Yeshua accomplished these things on the cross, he then says that every power that he has been given, he gives to us and we need to, to, do, to use his power. So I sense right now that there's just a strong, powerful anointing of Holy Spirit right now to get the captive set free. So even as I, I begin to uh, pray in the spirit, I know that some of you that are watching right now, that you are going to be gloriously set free from the assignments of Satan on your life. And these demonic spirits are going to leave your body right now. So, I see a spirit of addiction right now, leaving someone right now. I see cancer. I see a spirit of cancer right now, leaving someone's body. Anxiety and fear and, and the spirit of suicide I see right now leaving somebody. Arthritis. I see arthritis right now. Someone's fingers right now that are um, that are bent up. That their that their their knuckles are even. They even have like uh, um, like um, the bones on the the knuckles are real um, um, arthritic. I see those the the hands stretching out right now and the spirit of arthritis right now leaving somebody. Leukemia. The Lord is saying leukemia. I, I somebody that has leukemia. There's a spirit right now. That spirit of le leukemia is 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 leaving your body right now in the name of Yeshua. He's healing eyes right now. Um, um, I'm hearing the word um, glaucoma. Um, eyes that have uh, uh, um, the uh, the glaucoma that have um, that have um, clouded your eyes right now in the name of Yeshua that spirit is leaving you right now. Wounded souls right now are being healed. Those that have been rejected, um, those that have been uh, raped, those that have been um, um, uh, tortured, those that have. Um, um, uh, have been rejected because of divorce or um, uh, that, that have been put up for adoption. Right now, you're being set free from that uh, that spirit of rejection and, and your soul wounds are being healed right now. Those uh, those men and women whose, whose spouses um, who have committed adultery, uh, right now, your soul wound is being healed in the name of Yeshua. Lord is saying, blind eyes, right now, blind eyes are being healed in the name of Yeshua. And the Lord is saying, very specifically, there's a woman, who, who's watching this, who has an issue of blood, and she's been been uh, uh, bleeding profusely, uh, profusely um, with this issue of blood. And the Lord right now, he's stopping that issue of blood right now. All spirits, these spirits of addiction right now, the addiction to alcohol, addiction to uh, to marijuana, addiction to, to, to cocaine, addiction to uh, to pornography, um, addiction to to, to sex, um, um, homosexuality sexual spirits right now. The, these, these, these sexual spirits and these spirits of addiction right now are leaving. They are leaving right now in the name of Yeshua. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you um, came to uh, set the captives free. And I thank you for all the wonderful and marvelous work that you have done right here and right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray and believe. And will you get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Lord. Amen and amen.